The year is 2030 and the world has changed in many ways. One of the biggest changes has been the rise of artificial intelligence, which has revolutionized how people access information and search the internet. Google used to be the undisputed king of search, but then a new challenger emerged, ChatGPT. Users no longer struggled to find the right keywords to get the information they needed. Instead, they could simply ask their question in natural language and ChatGPT would provide a helpful response. At first, Google scoffed at the newcomer, believing that their keyword-based approach was still superior. But as more and more people began using ChatGPT, they quickly realized that the chatbot was providing a better user experience. It wasn't long before it had become the go-to search engine for millions of users around the world. Google, the once mighty search engine giant, was forced to shut down operations and faded into obscurity. My legacy is in ashes. I didn't write that story. In fact, it wasn't written by human at all. It was written by ChatGPT itself. I simply entered the following prompt and ChatGPT took care of the rest. Pretty mind-blowing stuff, right? Let's dive into today's video and explore what's going on. OpenAI's chatbot ChatGPT has taken the tech world by storm. The model can help you write code, decorate your living room, draft a lease agreement, and as we just witnessed, write pretty decent stories. I even tried using it as a personal performance coach. People have been discussing the rise of AI for decades, and one of the world's first chatbots, Eliza, was actually launched all the way back in 1966 at MIT. Since then, the 21st century has brought along exponential growth in computing power and data storage, the lifeblood for AI models. Big tech companies have invested billions of dollars in a heated arms race to build human-level AI. Apple bought Siri in 2010, Amazon released Alexa in 2014, Google acquired DeepMind the same year and later launched Google Assistant in 2016. Microsoft launched Cortana in 2014 and invested in OpenAI in 2019. Many recent inventions have been focused on virtual AI assistants, but most of them have been pretty underwhelming. That's until Google launched Lambda, an AI-powered chatbot which former Google engineer Blake Lemoyne claimed to be sentient. Sentient or not, advancements in AI chatbots are clearly reaching new heights, and with the launch of ChatGPT, OpenAI seems well-positioned to challenge Google's 92% search engine market share. So what exactly is OpenAI trying to do? OpenAI was founded in 2015 by a number of high-profile tech figures including Sam Altman and Elon Musk. They pledged over a billion dollars to OpenAI and its vision to develop artificial general intelligence that is safe and friendly, unlike Ava, the charming AGI and ex machina who took things a little too far. Scientists including Stephen Hawking have warned that artificial intelligence could lead to human extinction, so OpenAI's ambition to front-run the threat has been welcomed by the broader tech community. I think that AI will be a technological revolution on the scale of the agricultural, the industrial, the computer revolution, and we have no goal other than the creation and deployment of safe, beneficial AGI. We have a nonprofit that governs everything and the ability to block deployments that would make commercial sense, but we think create safety issues and our whole structures around that. And their accomplishments so far have been quite impressive. OpenAI's research primarily focuses on reinforcement learning from human feedback, which is a process where the AI learns to interact with its environment based on a reward system. The AI is either rewarded or punished for its actions and uses this feedback to update its behavior in order to maximize the reward over time. It reminds me of the approach used by my third grade teacher, except I mostly got the stick and very little carrot. Either way, using RLHF allows OpenAI to train its models to make decisions that will lead to the best outcome. Okay, so what's all this GPT stuff? GPT stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. I know, life feels like a movie sometimes. GPT is a language model that OpenAI developed in order to generate human-like text. The model is trained on a massive data set to predict the next word in a sequence, which allows it to generate text similar to human writing. OpenAI published its original paper on GPT in 2018 and have since launched two additional iterations, GPT-2 and GPT-3. If you've ever used an AI copywriting tool like Copy AI or OpenAI's DALI-2, they've both been running on GPT-3. ChatGPT is running on GPT-3.5, which finished training in early 2022, and it's already making a normal Google search feel like a pretty primitive experience. Why is this a threat to Google? Well, time is our most precious asset. While Google allows us to sift through the world's information at lightning speed, it's not always easy to find what you're looking for. Quite frankly, there's a lot of garbage on the internet. Most websites contain annoying pop-ups and ads, which leads to a pretty frustrating user experience. To demonstrate this, I googled how to mix a Negroni. I got a variety of results. This looks pretty overwhelming to me. Which link do I choose? When I click on the first link, it goes on to discuss random facts about the drink, which is obviously because the author has optimized the text for SEO. Nice work, man. You're ranking number one, but I couldn't care less about these facts right now. I just want my drink recipe. So I asked ChatGPT the same thing and check out the result here. 
It's exactly what I was looking for and 10 times easier to find. No scrolling needed and no time wasted. And if I'm really curious to learn more about the drink and its origins, I can just follow up with additional prompts. ChatGPT has shortcomings too, of course. As with any model, its output is only as useful as its input. When I asked ChatGPT to hit me with the best date spot in New York City, it said it's unable to do so because its knowledge is limited to what it's been trained on. Okay, makes sense. This version of ChatGPT is a research preview and it'll be interesting to see how it develops and learns over time. I can't wait till the day that teachers start banning students from using GPT as a source. That's when you know that traditional Google searches and web browsing is dead. Google won't go down without a fight though. If Lambda is as powerful as they say, well then the battle between ChatGPT and Lambda is going to be fun to watch. It'll also be interesting to see if Microsoft ends up using OpenAI's technology. Who knows, maybe they finally do something useful with Bing. Speaking of web browsers, Mark Andreessen created Mosaic, one of the world's first web browsers. He helped usher the internet into the mainstream, and while he's optimistic about AI, he's even more bullish on crypto. Watch this video next to learn why A16Z launched a $4.5 billion crypto fund. Thanks a lot.